Now this club I'm about to review today, well in fact a full set of these clubs, is probably the most requested video I've had in the time I've been doing YouTube. And like I said, I didn't just get hold of a couple of these things, I've got a full set of pitching wedge through to this, which is a five iron. Who's impressed by that at least? You see, there's a part of me, well, that doesn't even want to review these clubs because I used to be a golfing snob. But thankfully, I have changed. I've seen the light. It's probably clubs like these that uh, really force my hand a little. I can no longer choose to ignore these clubs. In fact, in today's video, I'm going to be testing what is quite possibly the easiest set of clubs I have ever used. The most forgiving, I suppose you'd call them. The question is just what makes them so good? What quantifies them as being so forgiving? And who are they from? See, in many ways, I'm almost too scared to like these type of clubs because, well, quite honestly, ego gets in the way. Do I really want to like these things and have to consider putting them in the bag? It's a case of uh, ego over performance, which we all know it exists, but, uh, well, it's not very intelligent, is it? And when you strike one down the middle with another five iron, already you're starting to ask questions. The question in today's video is quite a simple one. If these turn out to be the easiest irons that I've ever used, and I play really well with them, am I prepared to make one big compromise and start to play with them? Big question. If I hit any more shots, that's right on the flag, 180 in. Oh my word. These irons are from possibly what I would consider the sort of, uh, well, the star of the show, the best brand, if you like, of 2022, because I virtually loved everything that they've brought out so far. And these included, roll out up the hill and roll out up the hill. Hmm, <sighs> nearly. So a decent par with two f five irons and two putts. That's a decent start. The question is, Who's that brand and what are these clubs? Well, the brand is in fact Cleveland and the clubs are the Launcher XL Halos. You asked for it. You know what's really interesting is almost the negatives. Well, they become very much the positive. And what do I mean by that? Well, the kind of the bulk and mass of these clubs. For many, and including myself, that would be highlighted as being well, a negative, but what I've seen from today, and that shot included, is it's the bulk and mass, and particularly the mass within that sole unit that makes up it being a real, real positive, because the interaction between turf and ball and my swing, and when I don't quite get it right, is superb. We've seen this kind of rail system before from other brands. It is effectively like it's hitting a hybrid, so that can be a great help and assistance. And I think for average golfers, this sole unit, this style and mass of club, particularly where I've hit right now, which is where that was a five iron, it's a huge, huge positive in helping us make sure we get, well, better than we deserve at times. Now, one situation that bothers me greatly with this type of iron is that when I'm looking for a bit of finesse, the sort of short end of the game, then am I really able to get that from effectively a hybrid iron? and a hybrid pitching wedge at that. And I'm really sort of, that's what I would, I've questioned in my mind until I tried them today. And there's a typical delicate one down the slope, down the green, have I got the kind of feel that I want in this type of club? Now, judging by the distance of the performance on that, the answer is yes. Then we go back to the first hole that I played this morning when I had a little awkward one over a bit of a rise in the green. Same club, pitching wedge, executed the shot with great control of pace yet again. And then there's a hole previous again, which we stuck it to similar distance. So three shots played with wedge in and around the green, far different in terms of the result than I would ever have expected. And it's the kind of thing that I've got in my head, that preconceived idea of what I'm expecting to do in terms of performance from a hybrid iron and what actually happens in reality. 
Now these are very much a progressive set of irons in their size and their shaping. So if you look down at the pitching wedge end, then that kind of bulk that you see in terms of the, the hybrid style, if you like, the back end, you don't see that in the pitching wedge. I don't think you see them, say me going back to the bag, I don't think you see it until perhaps the seven iron, but then you get down to the five iron, which is what I've got in hand now, and you'll start to see some significant changes in terms of the back side. So let's see if I can just do that with both clubs. And side by side, you can see quite a lot of bulk in the five iron, little or none at all, apart from the thick top line in the pitching wedge. So very much the same makeup of set, but very different visually at address. And I think, again, that's a huge positive because that bulk and mass is seen at the side or the end of the bag, if you like, where you need a bit of confidence and you need inspiration in terms of that backside being so big because all you need to do is stick a bit on it and then five and six irons well they're absolutely flying out there and that short end of the game like we've already seen you're quite happy you can play those little shots with a bit of finesse and feel like you've got a fairly normal wedge in hand Well, the one thing that I didn't expect to be talking about in a video of a hybrid iron, that's a bit of a pull left hand, is the feel and the sound out of these things. Because like I said, hybrid irons, I'm thinking they're gonna sound like hybrids, to be quite honest with you. They're gonna have a ping off them, a ting off them, if you like, which is, you know, it's okay. It's, but it's not like playing a set of irons where I've got to say, this isn't the case. Even in the bigger, bulkier end of that five hybrid iron, um, still, whatever's inside there, this is a hollow bodied iron as we know it. There's a lot going on inside, but Cleveland have done an exceptional job in making these feel and sound like irons and not hybrids. And for me, just from a mental thing, if I'm playing what is my iron set, I want them to sound like irons, as daft as it may sound, but that's exactly what they managed to do. So even from a feel and sound perspective, I've got to say, I'm not only impressed, I'm just hugely surprised at how good it is. Now, of course, it's not all rosy in the garden and there are downsides to these clubs. Of course, there is that bulk and mass and it isn't going to appeal to everybody. That top line is thick, even the wedge where you can't see the bulk behind it. And again, it is a super game improvement iron. There is no doubt about that, but there is no doubt there's a good logic behind why they are the bulk and mass they are. But you've got to get over that as well. Then, of course, there is that offset element, particularly at the sort of five iron. It seems a very sort of closed face to me and one that I struggled with at address, even though I hit a couple of straight shots that we've looked at and I've shown you on video and said how good they were, I was noticeably sort of holding the face open almost through impact, which is never good. What you don't want to be doing is adapting your swing to suit the sort of setup. And like I said, that closed face, that offset, whatever you want to refer to it is, it is something that will suit lots and lots of people, but it can also have a negative impact for a few as well. So just beware, whilst I'm singing the praises of these clubs, there are things, no doubt, that you've got to consider. And as ever, it's important that you go and try them out. Right, what I'd like you to do right now is get involved in the comment section below, because no matter how forgiving these things are, are you able to get over the look? So I'm going to give you potentially a review that says, yes, they're amazing. Yes, I played so, so good with them. But even so, are the looks of these things just too much? Can you consider putting a set of hybrid irons in your bag to make you play better golf? There's a question for you. Now, I started the day by collecting dry ball data, and of course, it was the obligatory seven iron. And as you can see from the numbers up on screen now, well, they did everything I would expect a seven iron with this loft to do in terms of performance. In fact, they probably did it a little bit better. And yeah, I say exceed expectations because if you look at the dry ball data closely, what you'll see is a great launch angle, which is high. It's also got a good descent angle, very steep descent angle. That coupled with a high spin number for me with this kind of lofted seven iron means these are stopping on greens. And in many ways have exceeded some of the normal irons, if you like, that I have tested in terms of dry ball data. So from a data perspective, 100% no issues whatsoever. Now very much is what I've seen in the driver technology, there is a counterbalance weight in the butt end of each of these clubs. It's an eight gram weight, which is a counterbalance, and that is supposed to give you greater control over the club head. Now, it's impossible, like I said in the driver review, to substantiate that claim or to, to understand quite what it does. They even make a claim that it keeps you on better swing plane. Again, I just struggle to understand the science behind that technology, 
all I will say is that both with the driver and this, the driver made the counterbalance, the eight gram weight made the driver head feel lighter. And perhaps there's an element of that that goes on in the iron set as well. The idea being then if it's a lighter head that you're generating just a little bit more club head speed and maybe a little bit more ball speed, I don't know. It's a bit of technology that's in there. I don't fully understand it and therefore I'm gonna leave that one open for debate, but by all means as ever, chuck you to penithin down the comment section below and see if you can make more sense of it than I can. I just can't believe how straight I've hit these irons either today and uh, my feelings are that the challenge that Cleveland face is that these clubs or this type of set of clubs is not the norm, it's not what we're used to and therefore you're going to take some persuading as to whether or not you'll try these things just like I was but I know that I'm pretty much almost 100% certain that every golfer, no matter what your ability, if you tried these golf clubs, you would be, you'd be impressed. I, I challenge you not to be impressed by what these do and just how forgiving they are. Right, well, we'll uh, see if we can finish off with a bit of a, well, this will be a birdie. We started off, we've played all Cleveland products. It, products, it was a driver, Cleveland Launcher XL off the tee, five iron, then a nine iron into here. And let's see if we can just finish off with uh, possibly a birdie. Got to roll out a bit. Got to roll out. Oh, it was right online. Just needed a bit more pace, but we'll finish off with a nice par. My summary is, well, super impressed. And for those of you pointing me in the right direction of trying these things, then yeah, it was an eye opener because these are without doubt the easiest irons I have ever played or tested. They're super, super forgiving and they would appeal to many golfers. And I think the thing is, like I said, the shape, the look, that's a challenge for us to overcome. But if you try them, I'm pretty much sure that uh, you'd be as impressed as I am because I was expecting forgiveness in the likes of the five iron, the six iron, it's got so much bulk behind it. But then when you look at the nine iron and the pitching wedge, they're not, there's not finesse, that's the wrong word, but they're, they're less bulky but they're very playable. So you get this dual thing where you've got the forgiveness, but then you've got the playability. And I go back, I suppose, to the Cleveland CBX wedges, which I first tested a couple of years ago, those wide sole wedges from Cleveland, which again, are super impressive and super helpful for the likes of me and you in terms of average golfers, because they assist us with eliminating, if you like, duff shots is the way I'd explain it. And I think these, this set of irons does exactly the same thing. So. If you can shove your ego to one side, overcome the looks, then I suggest you give these a go. But more importantly, maybe these are not new to the market. They've been around for a bit. So if you've tried them, let me know what you think. Have I gone over the top with these? Were these the easiest irons that you've ever tried or not? Point your fellow golfer in the right direction with some comments down below and I'll see you all soon.